Hi, I'm Bill O'Reilly. Thanks for watching us tonight. The people revolt. Trump wins. That is the subject of this evening's Talking Points memo. In perhaps the most stunning political story in American history, the folks rejected corruption and unfair federal policies and delivered vast power to a maverick political novice who is promising to treat working Americans with respect. There is no question that the Democratic machine waged an arrogant campaign that justified Hillary Clinton's incredible record of ethical deficiencies. While many politicians distort and mislead, Mrs. Clinton seems incapable of speaking the truth. Her exploitation of a massive charitable foundation for her own benefit is simply stunning. Even more troubling, she sincerely believes that she did nothing wrong or has ever done anything wrong. Americans, even some who voted for her, noticed the narcissism. Thus, they denied Hillary Clinton power. Here's a talking point said last Wednesday when I explained why Clinton might lose. There should be grave concern in the Clinton camp. The reason the secretary may lose is that the tipping point may have been reached. If you are familiar with Malcolm Gladwell's theory, bad things mount up, then suddenly, at a dramatic moment, everything comes crashing down. And that's exactly what happened. The American people have had enough of Hillary Clinton. On the policy front, important statements were made yesterday. First, working folks are tired of supplementing millions of people who are gaming the system. Enough with a chaotic federally imposed health care system that punishes productive people with high insurance fees so that other Americans can access free health care. Safety nets are vital for the suffering poor in this country. But a vast income redistribution scheme that is clearly unconstitutional is abusive. President-elect Trump has vowed to replace Obamacare, and that can't come fast enough. Also, there's no question that a weak federal government has allowed immigration in America to become a national scandal. Hillary Clinton has no interest in fixing any of that, shamelessly pandering to the Hispanic community in order to harvest votes. The fact that Mexican cartels are harming this nation by smuggling narcotics and undocumented people in here does not seem to phase Clinton or her party in the least. The fact that Democrats will not even vote for Kate's law, which would protect all Americans from dangerous, illegal alien felons, is insane. The voters noticed. On the workplace front, workers cannot increase their earning power if business is strangled by onerous taxation and regulation. It's abundantly clear that liberal America believes corporate America is the enemy and must be punished. Hillary Clinton bought into that, intimidated by radical Senators Sanders and Warren. Unless, of course, she herself is handed corporate money, then it's fine. Voters noticed. But the real enemy, Islamic terrorists, were not to be unilaterally confronted by the USA, no matter how many innocent people they slaughtered. No! The Obama-Clinton doctrine was to wait for international consensus before taking action and never offend by using the words Islamic terrorism. Voters noticed. Then it was a shocking admission by Hillary Clinton that despite being a Christian, she believes unborn babies have no rights whatsoever and can be killed up until birth if the mother's health is in question. That extreme position goes directly against homicide laws in this country and unmasked Clinton as a radical extremist in the eyes of Americans who value life over destructive ideology. I could go on and on about Hillary Clinton, but enough. I hope she takes some time off, then comes back, reforms her charity in order to do some good in the world. Now on to Donald Trump. He may not realize it, but the vicious, dishonest national media actually helped him win the election. Again, the masks came off during the campaign. Take a look at this reaction during the Trump victory. We've talked about everything but race tonight. We've talked about income. We've talked about class. We've talked about region. We haven't talked about race. This was a white lash. This was a white lash against a changing country. It was a white lash against a black president in part. And that's the part where the pain comes. Let's remember what the Trump supporters are voting for. 
He asked for a ban on Muslims, build a wall, he offended Mexicans, the disabled, lashed out at a Gold Star family, the military fighting in Mosul around there. He said they shouldn't tell people what's happening, and he access Hollywood tape. There probably is a strong sentiment about not having a woman president, and that is something that we've never had a woman president, and we've talked about excitement among women to have a woman president, but uh, there's, there's always in these situations at least equal amounts of hostility to that kind of change. That's just bull. Mrs. Clinton's loss had nothing to do with her gender. For the record, I came on at 8.15 last night and said this. Well, Trump's competing pretty well, I think, across the board. But I think that uh, at this point, it'd be foolish to make any kind of broad uh, assessment of uh, what the vote's going to turn out to be. It doesn't look like there's going to be any shocking upsets or shocking um, vote tallies anywhere. It's a slug out right now. And that's what happened. A slug out. They're still counting votes in New Hampshire and Michigan and Arizona. Now, we are proud of our campaign coverage. It was accurate and tough-minded. On Monday, I told you that Republicans would hold the Senate, which they did. Much of the credit for the factors perceptive campaign reporting goes to my staff, and I'll deal with that later in the broadcast. Apart from us, however, the collapse of an objective press in this country angered many Americans who still believe in fair play. That's why the polling failed. Many voters simply said, blank you, and refused to participate when asked their opinion. Investors Business Daily was the best poll, and you might consider adding that publication to your life. Distrust of the media is at an all-time high in the USA. So when left-wing zealots masquerading as journalists pounded Trump without mercy, voters grew numb to it. Some of that even happened on this network, as a few commentators tried to make names for themselves at Trump's expense. Same thing with the people who did not like Hillary Clinton. There is a difference between tough, fact-based political interviews and playing to those in the politically correct fanatical bleachers. Is there not? So the press actually helped Donald Trump win the election. How ironic. Finally, a personal note, very tough race for me to cover. I know President-elect Trump for a long time, but I had to challenge him, and I did. One columnist at the Washington Post, Callum Borchers, noticed, and I'm grateful for his honesty in a sea of media deceit. As for Hillary Clinton, we gave her fair play, even though her campaign lied to us. Shocking, right? But we maintained our professional posture here. Props should also go to the Fox News election folks who made CNN and some other than networks look foolish. FNC was far ahead on calling states and giving solid information. In the end, voters had their say. Memo to Donald Trump. It wasn't rigged. And that's the memo. Next on the run.